So in our last video, we actually got our OnCloud server set up and we were able to log into it for the very first time. So let's look at the interface for OnCloud. So if I look at OnCloud, I can see I've got files over here and I've got activities. And currently right now, there's no activities. <laughs> there's nothing going on on the server. And I can look at the gallery. I've got a gallery button. It'll pull all the images on my server together and just try to bring them together in a gallery. And then I have apps. Now, the apps, I actually have the ability to add other things to OnCloud. So you can see, like, activity is an app. Collaborative tags is an app. I could turn these, I could disable these things. I could turn off deleting files if I didn't want people to be able to delete files. I could turn off the first run wizard, or I can only enable it for specific groups. I can do the gallery for specific groups, the mail template editor for specific groups. Um, there's a PDF viewer. So this really does function just like a regular cloud server. I can even turn on experimental apps. Now, if I turn on experimental apps in here, I can it'll bring it'll actually bring up apps that um, they're they are known sometimes to have security breaches or lost data. So I don't run any experimental apps on on my on cloud. So over here, you can see this is I can search in the little search pane, but I can come over here to personal, and I don't care about showing you this stuff. But I'm going to delete I'm going to delete this cloud after I'm done with this anyway. So you can see I have my personal info, like the name, my, my full name if I wanted to. You can even upload a picture um, for your avatar. You could put your email address and then also what group you belong to. And then you could see your password. You can change your password. You could do the first one wizard, wizard again. Um, you can stream. These are all things that you're, you're streaming. And at least it's going to show up in the activity stream. And then you can list your own actions in the stream if you wanted to. And then uh, you can set up an email to receive notification emails on a daily, weekly, hourly basis. And then you can share your cloud. This is your federated cloud with other people like by Google Plus or add it to your website or whatever you want it to. And you can see down here the version of it is running 9.01 stable. And if I come back up here and go to users, you can see since I'm an admin, I could see I would be able to see all the users on this on cloud. I can even add groups. So I can just click on add groups and I could say users and hit enter. And now I have a users group. So people that I wanted to have specific, and this is good to have groups like this because say if I wanted a group that had a quota limit of only one gig and I wanted everybody in that group to only be able to have a gig worth of space, then I could just make one group and instead of having to do individual users, I could just make one group and everybody in that group would would have you know a quota set to it so which is really cool um, I could also come in here and go to admin so I'll go to my admin panel this is gonna pop up with some security warnings which is fine doesn't really matter it's okay so I can see how I share so I can allow apps to use the share API I can allow users to share via links just like you do inside of um, OneDrive and inside of uh, Dropbox I can allow resharing so they can reshare with other people. I can allow sharing with groups. I can restrict users to share with only users in their group. Um, I can exclude from sharing. I can allow username auto completion and share dialogue. Um, I can, or I could not because one of the reasons why you would maybe want to turn this off is that in a bigger company, maybe you don't want getting you don't want people just randomly finding people and sharing stuff with them. Well. If you turn this off, you would have to know the username of the user that you want to share with, and you can't just randomly guess it. Because if you leave this turned on, then I could just type in like, you know, DR, and it would probably come up as Dr. Media if I was a user on, on this uh, cloud system. And then I can choose whether I want to let this, this cloud be shared with other cloud, other on cloud which is part of the federated cloud sharing. So I could turn this off if I wanted to. Um, and then I also could add additional on cloud uh, servers to this server, and they would be trusted servers that I could get to, which would expand the size of this server. So I could have another server somewhere set up, maybe uh, in a co-location type of, type of deal, and be able to share with that server as my backup off-site, as my off-site backup server. Now that's really cool. 
because if you were to purchase like a VPS server and install on cloud onto that VPS you could then have an off-site on cloud that was a backup and additional space to store to now I really like that feature that's really nice and this is all from the free version of, of on cloud this is not even the enterprise version and then I can set maximum file handling like what's the biggest file you can upload in megabytes so you can set that from here and then you have mail you have templates in here if you're gonna send mail now the way mail is sent by default inside of here is by PHP I don't I don't like sending email by PHP because it's unsecure I would suggest that you change this to SMTP because then you could use encryption like SSL encryption or TLS encryption or you could just use send mail which is not secure either the SMTP is probably the most secure way to do this and then you can also say server side encryption so you can encrypt this on the server side if you wanted to so you can say yes enable server side encryption so everything on here would be encrypted and then you've got things in here that's tips and tricks stuff that show you how to back up how to monitor and do some theming because this is a theme right now that's running um, for this so if we look at our menu up here again we've got our help and then we've got logout so it's really cool that you can set this up yourself and run this yourself now what I will say to access this from outside of your network you have to have one or two things and you either have to have a dedicated IP address or a static IP address that you can serve or you need to use a dynamic DNS service kinda like uh, duck DNS and I'm not gonna show you how to set that up maybe I'll show you in another video but I'm not going to show you how to set that up because I actually have a static IP address that I use and that's how I'm able to get to my on cloud outside of my network now I will say that you will probably well not even probably you will you will have to set up and let me actually log into my router I will I will show you this much of it so you're going to have to set up a brand new port forwarding to get to your on cloud server outside of your network so what you want to do is you want to find wherever port forwarding is in your particular router wherever that's at you want to find that and you want to enter in and you can just give it a name which I, I just named it on cloud and the port range it's really it's over the the uh, public HTTP port but you still need to give it a a port forwarding so that when it comes in over 80 that you know what IP address you're talking to so what I would do is I would have a public IP address of 80 and a private IP address of 80 and a range of 80 so 80 to 80 to 80 over TCP and UDP and the IP address would be the IP address of my cloud server so right now like this is 10.1.10.3 so I would have this in my IP address here and like I say I'm, I'm not concerned with because this is all these are all my internal LAN these are internal LAN numbers and nothing is external right now now to be able to access this outside of your network you do have to know your external IP address you can get that by typing IP checker into your um, Google okay, so if you're gonna Google if you're gonna go to google.com go to google.com and just type in IP check All right if you do IP check it'll actually look and it'll find your public IP address so you want to take that public IP address and do a forward slash on cloud if you access that from outside of your network then it would give you access to your internal on cloud server outside of your network now if you don't have a static IP address you have to use something like duck DNS and if I can pull up let's see if I can see if I can get to duck DNS so uh, duck DNS so I can see in here I can go to duck DNS and what DuckDNS lets you do, and I'll actually sign in to DuckDNS. 
and it, don't worry I don't have anything set up in here so you won't be able to steal my stuff so in duck DNS I actually have a free account I have a token my token was generated three days ago I created this on the 28th of May and then in here what you would do is type a domain so I could say like P like doctor media right I could say doctor media so it'd be HTTP doctor media dot duck DNS dot org what this will do it will add a it will add a duck DNS which is free you can get the duck DNS for free it'll add that DNS it will use your current IP address that's your public IP address and it gives you a dot com or in this case a dot org to be able to type in to get to your cloud server so to get to this outside my network I would basically type in doctormedia dot duck DNS dot org and if I did that it would bring me to my cloud server now dynamic DNS um, there's a couple of other companies that do dynamic DNS there's some you can pay for so you could use you could go and buy your own domain name like a whatever dot com and be able to use that as your cloud server name if you wanted to um, but duck DNS is fine for me because I don't have a lot of people that are actually using it so um, I use duck DNS realistically but you you want to use a dynamic DNS service if you have a dynamic IP address if your IP address changes from your ISP even if it's only once a year if it changes you will not be able to access your cloud server outside of your network unless you use a dynamic DNS service like this one like I said in my case I actually pay for a static IP address from Comcast so that's how I'm able to have one static IP address and not have to worry about anything which is fine now the last thing that I will say as the misnomer is that please understand that for me I use Comcast business class services that means I do not have a monthly quota on how much data I can upload or download over my wired internet connection for most other ISPs like AT&T, like U, well, Uverse, which is AT&T. So, like for Uverse, for Comcast Residential, and even for Verizon FICOS, most of them have a monthly quota that you can use of internet. For most of them, it's like 300 gigs. So keep that in mind. If you're using Comcast residential services which I'm not I'm using their business services there is no data cap on the business services and I pay and believe me I pay an extra premium to be able to do that so it's not like it's like oh just go get you know you know if you live in an apartment complex or apartment building or something like that you probably can't get um, the the business services anyway you have to be in a freestanding building or in a single-family home to be able to really get those um, services but if you're using one of those services and you're using and you and you have your own server running and you're accessing it from outside of your your home just know that that's part of your 300 or however many gigs of data you you're allowed to use every month so I'm telling you now Dr. Media is giving you the warning that don't just go out there and run your own server and think you can start giving your server out to all your friends and everybody in the neighborhoods using the server and you've become the server for the neighborhood that's really a bad idea unless you're paying for a static IP address and your and your um, and your internet service provider understands what you're doing if they know what you're doing and you've talked to them about getting a setting a static IP address and they're okay with you doing that which for business services they are then you're fine if you're using residential services then they might deactivate your account because you're using too much internet and you're causing a bottleneck so just keep that in mind you can run your own you know you run your own server and everything else and have access to it from everywhere but just be mindful of the bandwidth that you're using um, and I know that like with Comcast residential services they actually give you a meter that you can go into your services and check and say oh well look I'm used like 200 you know gigs or whatever and I only have 100 gigs left so I hope you enjoyed being able to set up your own your own on cloud server which is pretty a mouthful to say right 
So being able to set up your own on cloud server. You can find me right here on YouTube. I'm trying to get better about putting videos out at least every other day. Um, work schedule has been very crazy. Took on a bunch of brand new clients. So got a lot of stuff coming out pretty soon. Some stuff that I really can't talk about right now. And I know it's it's kind of like, why are you even telling us we can't talk about it? I, I just, uh, I want to tell, but I can't. So, uh, you know, some pretty, some pretty cool film um, film stuff that we're working on right now and some stuff we're expanding to and I'm changing around my work hours so I'll have more time to make more videos throughout the summer so hopefully I'll be able to get more videos out here come summertime um, but if you like the kind of content that I'm doing here on the Phoenix Inception channel and you like the way Dr. Media is going and I might make this into a separate series I might make this into the how to free your free NAS box series yeah, let's go with that. How to free your free NAS box series. So hopefully you've enjoyed all of this. And if you have, hopefully you'll stick around and you'll subscribe for more great videos like this. And leave comments down in the comment section down below. And until next time, my digital mutants, stay breezy. Once again, I am Domi Cunningham, better known as Dr. Media. See you next time, guys.